Kevin W. 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 Rich. A lot of people think that you're new, but the reality of it is, is you've been doing this for almost ten years. Now you 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 had a record deal like back in two thousand one, didn't you? I was actually signed when I was twelve. Um, I was in negotiations when I was eleven. I've been in the industry, I think, my whole life. So um, no, I guess not technically new. I, I I guess the distinction is, I went to Europe when I was a kid. I had three top ten hits in Europe when I was thirteen, fourteen, like fifteen ish. And then I came back, and this is the first time I've done anything in America. So I think that's why, you know, I am a new artist in America. In America. Yeah. How would you compare the music scene uh, overseas compared to here? Oh, I don't know. Um, there's actually a lot of similarities. Obviously, each each culture has its own take, its own spin on things. Like, they have stars over there that you would never hear over here. You just, you don't even know that they exist, but they're massive everywhere else in the world. We're a little bit separated. We're kind of in our own little bubble, but it's something that is, um, you know, it's kind of like if you can make it in America, you can make it anywhere. And you have your song, uh, Body Shots, with, with Ludacris. How, how did Ludacris end up getting involved, and what was it like to work with uh, Mr. Bridges? <laughs> Mr. Bridges. Hey, gotta, gotta show respect. That's right. It was amazing. He was a lot of fun to hang out with. And basically what happened, he heard the song, he liked the song, wanted to do it, and I was just grateful that he wanted to take on Body Shots. So rock on, let's do it. Absolutely. What's the five-year plan? When you break it down like that, there's just simply too many variables. Like, you have to really focus on taking each step and making each step as effective as possible and understanding that even when things don't necessarily go the way you want them to go or if something changes like this, like today, our whole meeting changed. You know what? That's my life. That's the business. And um, you have to learn to roll with what you have. Use the momentum that you have to propel you to that next step, you know? And for me, it's not something that's so finite. It's about being an artist and being creative and being able to access new um, artists as well, like other producers, other writers, other artists musically, visually, fashion-wise to collaborate with and growing that way. So it's definitely an ongoing creation. Um, but all in all, I'd say the plan for the next year or so is to build more success domestically in the United States and then also to be able to tap into the international market because it's so much fun and um, there's a lot of money to be made there and it's just it's a blast. That's why I do it, you know. Touring overseas is a, is a lot of money. So. Touring everywhere, there's a lot of money. There's touring is the way to go for sure. People forget about merchandise. You can make a lot off merchandise. You can make a lot off merchandise for sure. And you'll notice that like pop icons now, whether it's in music or not, you know they'll have a perfume line, they'll have tie-up pills, they'll have gym shorts. They'll have. I heard Justin Bieber has nail polish now, what? for for his you know lady fans. Absolutely. Do it, Justin. But I want to see it on you. That's what I want to say. I want to see at least some black nail polish on you. You have to sport what you are, right? It's like con like when I did the uh, video with um, Ludacris, we had to take Conjure Cognac, and he was like not going to drink it. He was going to spit it out because, you know, you don't want to be drunk at 10 o'clock in the morning just because you're promoting alcohol. And I was like, mm-mm, that is your alcohol. You drink it. Oh, God, that kind of scares me because one day I'm going to have some product, and I'm not going to want to put it on there. like, mm-mm, that's your product. <laughs> I had that interview with Kevin back in the day. I saw you. I'm holding you to it. <laughs> there you go. Now, where, where do you think you fit in? Because you got, uh, as far as women pop stars, uh, you got Beyonce, and you got Rihanna, you got Lady Gaga seems to be the it thing right now. Where do you feel like you fit in style uh, style wise? That's a great question. Um, basically, in, I mean, you don't want to say in between, but you, you take, they all have stylistically different things to offer. Beyonce is freaking awesome. She's a little bit more urban, but she's still got that good girl edge, but she sings and dances. Lady Gaga obviously has a statement to say artistically and also um, when, you know, when she speaks, she has her beliefs, but um, she has, it's, it all breaks down right now to fun pop songs, no matter how you, which way you swing it. You know, people want to have a good time and they want to feel good, but then it comes down to personality fashion and my statement personally is about empowerment and I think what makes lyrically my music special and, and, and in other ways but lyrically particularly is that I have a tendency to be almost too honest but I appreciate it and I hope that other people will appreciate the uh, like the crazy uh, obsessed song well yeah crazy possessive really honest I mean lyrically body shots is 
pretty pretty honest, as well as other songs that aren't, you know, as aggressive that way. Although Captain save a if you've heard Captain save I don't know if you had, but it's, it's really funny. And then another song called I'll Be Seeing You Tonight. It's a really beautiful ballad that I'm so happy made the, made the record. Anyway, check that out. See a, a softer side. But again, it's meaningful and it's real. And um, when you have so many bland, not, I don't want to say bland, but when you have so many cookie cutter songs, it's nice to have that. And um, yeah, I'd love to show people more and more that despite the fact that it might not be socially um, always acceptable, it might not always be the status quo that I like going ahead and speaking out and, and finding positive ways to have that rebellion. I heard that you were or are a kickboxing instructor. Is that true? I was, yeah. <laughs> I did. I worked like three hours a day, six days a week back in the day, like learning and training for kickboxing. And I took all kinds of, you know, but not just not just kickboxing, but also you know fighting and, and boxing. So someone shouldn't mess with you. That's the bottom. Line. You know the funny thing is the reason I took it is because I'm usually so passive, but maybe it's the Italian in me. I don't know. But there definitely is a line with me. I'm nice. I'm nice. I mean I'm nice to the point where like almost too nice, you know. And that's why my mom put me in it in the first place. I was nine and I was getting bullied by boys and girls. And she was like, screw this. You're going into martial arts and you're going to learn how to defend yourself because you're too nice. You're too kind. So um, anyway, it was awesome because it taught you it taught you self-discipline, but it also taught you how to whoop somebody's butt if you needed to. Of course. And there are times, man, when that comes out <laughs> with everyone. Does it help with the dancing when you're doing dancing on stage or for video? Does what help? Does it help get it out, the aggression? Yeah, like, like uh, I don't know, being more flexible, I guess, you know? I love dancing. Because my, my hammies are tight. Like, I can't, you know. You That's not going to happen. Kickboxing. Maybe some maybe some kickboxing, but, but, not, but not dancing. All right, next. I mean, look at this people at Usher. True. Chris Brown, yeah. Michael Jackson. Sure. What, you, you don't want to work it like that? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I can save that for them, right? <laughs> I'll interview them. That, that's the extent of it. Um, now, being so young, you, are you 21, 22? Okay. Being so young and, you know, uh, coming out here in the United States and uh, <laughs> looking to have a long, beautiful career, how is that going to play into your personal life? How, how do you find the quote-unquote man of your dreams when you're looking to be a huge pop star and a household name? I don't worry about it. You, know, you just let it come? Absolutely. I think if you start sweating things like that, I mean, what, I, it'll all fall, fall into place, I believe that. And it's sad because, it's not sad, but it's definitely, it's interesting that the people that you're with, like, I don't want people to know about my private life, you know? Like, I want to be an, an entertainer, but when I get off stage, I want to go home and freaking put on my baseball cap and watch some sports and, I don't know, watch some movies and chill out on the beach and not have to feel done up. And I've realized that part of what I'm taking on is a 24-hour day, seven days a week, like, now people are showing up at, my, you know, just in my neighborhood and at home. I've had people come to my house from all over the world, like from different places in the world and show up like at my house. You know, I was actually out of town most of the time when this happened, but still people will come by and they want to take pictures just while I'm there. Or I'll go to the no airport. bueno. I'll go to the airport, you know, and like totally not ready for it. And now I'm starting to realize that I have to be prepared everywhere that I go. It, com it comes with the package. Absolutely. To represent, and it, you know, I'm trying to keep my family and friends out of it because it's not their like responsibility. It's not, you know, I don't want to put them in that situation. They didn't ask for this. I did. And um, so that's going to be a really interesting dynamic because how do you keep a relationship private? How do you keep anything private? Especially if you, if you end up with another person that is a celebrity themselves, which happens a lot. And another thing that happens is if you're famous, they become famous. It becomes like a social... Um, you know, like they, Turtle and Entourage. You know, then they want to know everything that you're doing and every fight that you have. They're out there like, oh, look at them strangling each other. You know, like, That's why you, you got to respect Jay-Z and Beyonce for keeping it so <laughs> private. So private. How do they do that? I don't even understand how that's possible. I don't know. They must be like paying somebody somewhere because how, how do you keep everything out of the press like that? I don't know, but they're damn good at it. Yeah, they are. Now, who would you, who would you rather date? A rock star or a rap star? I don't know that I want to date a famous artist, but um, if you had to choose, if I had to choose. It's tough. Okay. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. Probably rap. I mean, probably a rocker. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. You think they have more edge? Well, no, it's not about that. I mean, 
A lot of the rap songs are about having lots of women, different hoes and different area codes, you know, like, uh, and that's not exactly what you want as a girlfriend, so I have to go with a rocker who's like... Half of the rappers are married to us, that's funny. Oh no, it's true, it's so true. Uh, what? Yeah, they wrote the song 10 years ago, and now they have four kids and a wife, and they're like... <laughs> what type of a living, what type of a living do you think that you would be doing, if not in show business? <laughs> So funny. Um, I would be doing, I think that at the end of the day, I was meant to be a public figure either way. It would just be further down the line because I was majoring in economics and international relations and then I was going to go to law school and, and back in the day I wanted to do mediation and arbitration for multinational corporations. Um, and then I was also really into humanitarian law, but humanitarian law like you really only make, you don't make that much, you know. So I would have loved to have made money, learn about business, like international business, made money from both sides, you know, done all of the contracts and everything, know the ins and outs, and then also go and start spending more and more time helping people internationally. Because when I took humanitarian law, um, and when I touched on it from what I did have the opportunity to study, there's just so many great, there's so many ways that you could help people here, around the world, and really make a difference. And you do have to come out and be a spokesperson for that. And, um, and hopefully, you know, maybe in the future I'll be able to do that, tap into that anyway. What's your favorite comfort food? Happy or sad, you need it at night, you need it. What, what's the comfort food that you gravitate to? <laughs> Would I get really stressed? <laughs> The first thing I want to do is eat sour patches. <laughs> sour patches. Sour patches, man. It's the weirdest thing, but that is like I'll have a really stressful day, and I'm like, God, please, somebody get me some freaking sour patches, or or like any any kind of sour candy. That's the first thing I go to. But if I was to eat some junk food, I mean, I love ice cream. I'm on the junk food, like junk junk food. My my last question, you as an artist, what is your mission statement? Jeez. I have a few. As if you were a business. What's your mission statement to your fans uh, that you will uphold for your whole career? Be positive. Stay true to yourself. Live your dreams. There you have it. I appreciate the time. And bring it on. Bring it on. Kevin W. 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 Rich.